Morning, buddy. What are you guys doing today? Okay, camera out again. And Sunday morning, pretty early. The sun's not quite up yet. I didn't really do very well at keeping the camera on yesterday. It was kind of a whirlwind and talked to a lot of different people. Had a great time. Um, it was Saturdays, like I said, are usually the busy day. So there wasn't a whole lot of time <laughs> to do the YouTube thing. But um, yeah, we're going to do a walk around here this morning as long as it's still quiet. And... Well, to finish up, yesterday ended up working on, well, we got the D4 pinion latches adjusted, oh, I think two days ago now already, and then ended up working on the 11 grader last night, left the camera off, but we were out here, oh, is this me and Diesel and Digger and John ended up into the mix before we got done. The shutoff lever had never worked on this thing. It had always been stuck, so we ended up taking this panel off of the dash and we got it all freed up to where the linkage mechanism and everything is at least moving down there so later today maybe it was stuck right there for ever since we've had a thing later today maybe we can actually test that out and see if it really works so and of course we're gonna need to get a better pin in there because that one just had a machine head screw with a nut kind of like that one and yeah it's we need to get a good pin like that Nobody's got a pen, so anyway. Yeah, we were out here till like nine o'clock last night working on this. I ended up having the torches out and needing some fire to heat where it goes through the <laughs> casting and everything. And I'll tell you what, I was fighting this bolt up here to no end because, well, it goes down through kind of behind the panel down there and I was trying to start the nut on the back side and Diesel had the wrench up top and we're fighting it and fighting it and I'm dropping the washer and dropping the nut and we can't get anything going. Finally, he's like, why don't you just run the bolt from the bottom up? And I'm like, yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do this. Kid's smart, I tell you. Work smarter, not harder, Squatch. Ugh. Anyway, yeah, while everybody else was up enjoying the tractor show and spark show, and we were out here making our own fire after dark last night. So that was kind of fun. And then the old 2HD6 was out just a couple times this weekend, but unfortunately, we, well, determined that the cable control unit on the back is pretty much worn out. We lost friction drive. I think we also might have lost brakes on it. So this is the next project on the list. We're going to have to get into that and see what's wrong in there. I don't even know which, what brand it is. I think this one's a Letourneau. Let me see if I can find a tag. Way in here. Yes, I believe that's a Letourneau. So that's going to be the next workday project. We're going to probably put this back in the shed uh, with the back sticking out this time and have a work day and get into this thing and see what it's going to take to renew the frictions and get this cable uh, controlling this cable hoist working again for the blades. So always something to fix, right? Sun just coming up on the last day already. So walk the tractor line as long as it's quiet out here see what kind of interesting things we can find farmall super c kind of the next one on my list really i don't really need any more tractors at all but it's kind of like these things i like that flat center hub they have in them everything else is dished so that's they just kind of have a neat look to them f30 Got some of the early farmalls here. This is probably a regular with that exposed steering gearing at the top up there. Kind of neat, has the skeleton steel on the back. Here's the old 1020. Kind of like the one I just scrapped at home. Oh, but this one's a lot nicer, of course. And I don't know what this one is. This is maybe a 1530. Let's see if we can see on the tag down here. No, nope, no, nope, it's a W30. Still similar, just a little bit bigger. This has a McCormick Deering tag up there. Usually it's cast in like that one. This one, this one's even bigger still. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. 
This is kind of unique for a McCormick Deering for these angled lugs on the wheels like that. Usually they all have uh, they all have spikes like the 1020 does right there. Cleats, I should say. I always like the big wide flat operator stations on these. Oh, one thing I just noticed. You can still see a little bit of the old lettering gasoline side of that little starting tank. Look at that, some of the McCormick Deering on the side panel too. I just, I love them when they look like this personally. I like the old slat radiator guard. I don't know if that was something somebody made or if that's factory. Either way, it might be factory. It looks like a really good job. Yeah, I'm not seeing a tag on this one. This might be, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know enough about it to comment, so I should probably just keep my mouth shut, right? Cockshut 40. These always had some nice sheet metal on them, I've always thought. Six cylinder in this one. Little Ford Golden Jubilee model. Those were 1953. Yep. Just kind of an updated version of the 8N that we have at home. Of course, much better engine in it. This is the overhead valve as opposed to the old flathead. But pretty much the same layout on the rest of it. And right here, this would be an 8N because it has the four-speed transmission. I still have to do the red Ford lettering on the one at home. I am, I'm guilty. I have not got to that part yet. Otherwise, just like ours with the old flathead in it. Another cock shut. Massey Harris 44 Special. Massey Harris 33. Okay, so admittedly, I don't know a ton about John Deere's, but this one right here, this little GP, I've always had more of an interest in these tractors than any other model. And I think it's just because, look at the size of those cylinders. They're just, they're huge. <laughs> I like the unstyled design of these. I like how they're just, they're not very wide, they're kind of short, but it's like they're all engine. It's kind of like an RD6, that big three cylinder that sticks out on each side of the radiator, you know. It just something about these, I just like it. I like how they have all the lettering, like exhaust open, all the marks on the flywheel to know how to set it up to start it. And it's just kind of, Large two-cylinder engine, straight to a gearbox, straight to the finals, here, straight out to the wheels. I like the old shifter gate. They're just, they're just a neat looking tractor. I like them. Back into some more farmals again, we've got the MD, that's right diesel on the tank. I love how much stuff is going on along each side of this engine. Gasoline start switches to diesel. If you're watching Pete, this one's for you. Right here. Another 53 Super M. A lot like Seniors. This one has the belly pump though. In 53, I believe you could get them either or. This one has the belly pump. Seniors has the live hydraulic. And I, this one has live hydraulic too. This one has both of them. That is interesting right there. W series. So this W4 is like a Farm All H. It's got the same engine. They were a lot better for plowing though because they were a wide front, narrow, low to the ground. And yeah, they were primarily designed for field tillage work because you could get the draft of the plow in line with the center line of the tractor a lot better on these because they were so much narrower and you got that narrow wide front end so you had the whole tractor down in the dead furrow on the one side 
they actually were a better plowing machine than like the tricycle fronts. And over here, the W6, so this is the same as a Farmall M, same engine here, just a little bigger tractor. Here's an interesting tractor. My buddy Ron owns this one. A ZAS, I for industrial, M for military. And you can see this is the, it was an Air Force tractor, USAF. He's got all the lettering designations reproduced on it. I don't know what that TP36 is, but still has the lifting hooks lift here, as well as on the back, this extra bracket. It's got lift here on there rings on each side and he always does his tractors up very very nice he's got the old fire extinguisher on the seat of course can work the glare here all the gauges and everything hour meter everything's just pristine on the thing kind of an interesting setup it's got hand throttle as well as an auxiliary foot throttle one of those military spec things and neat part of it it still has a rebuild tag from the military on the side of the engine rebuilt data engineering depot maintenance shop it has you know of course all of the serial numbers but date 623 of 59 cylinder bore plus 20 rod journals minus 20 main journals minus 20 that's an interesting little piece of history to still have on this the old military tags and everything usually when they decommission these things they had to rip all the tags off but yeah, and he's got these interesting rear tires. He told me these are greater tires, actually. But they just, they fit the look of this machine. They're just different spec, just like everything else about it. Another interesting deal. As per military spec, it has a magneto instead of a distributor. So, yeah, really interesting tractor. You don't see many of these anymore used to be all kinds of these around when I was younger this is a Fordson Model F and yeah these kind of had a problem with uh, hooking up in the rear and rearing up in the front and flipping over because they were a little bit light and they didn't have the greatest geometry on the pull point back here of course this one's got an extension on it but that's what they came out with these fenders for these fenders come out and so far down at the back that the toolbox back here on each side also helped to double as a, uh, a flip over stop. So if it would rear up, it would hit these fenders to the ground and that would pretty much stop the thing from coming up and over. I think that's a running board like off of Model T somebody put on here. They cut the old Ford emblem out, but that's not tractor spec there. Another Minneapolis Moline 445. Of course, this is what my prototype crawler is based off of. You can see it's got similar sheet metal got the same cross on the front and the grill and of course x231 is the prototype to this tractor so yeah i gotta get back to that one these days steamer row still pretty quiet this morning another baker <laughs> Minneapolis another Minneapolis I like all the lettering they put on these things another Minneapolis That's a right and proper serial tag right there. Engines, engines and more engines. Old unpainted Stover, love them that way. Another one. just keep getting bigger and bigger. Rustin and Hornsby. That is quite interesting. Sold by Mumford Medland Limited, Winnipeg, 
It's like Manitoba. Must be from Canada. Yep. An interesting bit of kit. Here is a neat old Stover. I love the finish on this one. Brass is just slightly polished. Just some raw metal, raw steel here and there. Five horsepower, speed 340. Number D2375. That one's perfect, don't change a thing. Just walking this building here, another couple Fordsons hiding in here. Have not seen these out for a while. This one has an interesting mounted two bottom plow. See the old mounting brackets here attached straight to that back end and that pretty much solved their issue with rearing up and tipping over backwards. Not quite a three point setup yet. There was no top link. It pretty much just solidly mounts but the idea was there. It took another few years and Mr. Ferguson to uh, fully implement the three-point design but this is a later one this is going to be a cork or an irish fordson with this big round water air cleaner here and it has this style font lettering with that square boss on the radiator sides and we have the solid cast wheels those solid cast wheels were another um, little improvement they did to try and get a little bit more front end weight to get those so they wouldn't rear back quite so hard or quite so easy i should say Boy, they, they put a different carburetor on this thing. Look, they just hammered in the side of the fuel tank to make it fit. Ugh. Anyway. Looks like we had some maybe corn shelling going on over there. I haven't been over here to watch this work yet this weekend either, but another GP. Like I said, I like these things. It says a 31. United Oil Bath Air Cleaner. That's a neat setup. A brass era Ensign Carb. Of course, it has the same style fittings as the ensigns on the Caterpillars. That little dome cup and the bolt that holds it down, fuel line comes into it. There should be a little screen in there, kind of like a, a pre-filter deal. Again, taking a look at that gated shifter. Reverse, low, intermediate, and high. I like how they did that. Nice little tractor, so. Well, things are starting to come to life again, so I'm going to get out of everybody's way and see what other things find us today, huh? Well, it's just about noon on Sunday, and they're going to parade again at 1 p.m. today. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get the Super M probably over and on the trailer right now. We'll start that process of chaining down so that when it's time to leave, well, we can make a two-hour trip back home. It's hard to believe we've been here since Thursday already, and it's about noon on Sunday. Weekends always go fast. Okay, everybody, we're loaded down. Everything is secured on the tractor. I put bungees around the toolbox lid so I don't have to get out after about five miles and throw my mag mount on there like I did coming down. We are learning. We're getting our hauling routine down. It's a slow process, but we are learning. So now that we're all loaded and ready to go, we're just gonna go walk around kind of one last time, maybe talk to a few people, say our goodbyes, and decide when we want to get on the road.
well it looks like the project's just about wrapped up out here it's pretty much all flat bob's just spreading the last of the topsoil jimmy's out there with the stick making sure we're on point so i think we can head home Okay, let's get on the road. There, we got out. Poor Bob's still over there choking dust. That's Bob that's got the grater on my field. He's a heck of a dirt man. He is raking out powder. Perfect. Plenty of room. Yeah, let's park back down here on the flat again. Better for unloading. That yeah, should do it. Okay. Yep. First thing you gotta do is put the hat on, right? Two hours on the road feels good to stand up again. So, looks like the tractor's still there. Let's see if we still have the tread on all of our tires. That one's good. That one's good. We'll look at the other side. That one's good. That one's good. All right. Better than last trip, right? Well, it's about 5 p.m. Sunday evening, and we're ready to begin the not so fun process of putting all the fun away, right? Like I said before, it never ceases to amaze me how fast these weekends go. Especially when you're busy doing stuff, talking to people and everything else. It's hard to believe I've been away from home for four days already. Well, I lost track of what time it is, but the truck's put away, the trailer's put away, and the tractor's put away. So we watched the sun coming up at now then this morning, and as you can see behind me, it's pretty much gone here at home on the field. But kind of brings everything full circle, and I'll tell you what, it was a busy weekend, but I had so much fun. I could not believe how many people from the channel here turned out. I, I honestly lost count. Uh, it was a lot. All three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, people were walking up to me, hey, I know you're from the channel. I mean, we... A lot of good conversations had an excellent time it was nice being able to put some faces to some names and it was awesome meeting people that haven't been in the comment section but watch all the time our regular viewers all i can say is thanks everybody and there was several people that came from much further away from the show than i am and it's not exactly a short drive for me to get there so just really cool i've got like almost two hours worth of footage on the camera just from this last weekend like 86 files it's going to take me at least a couple of evenings after work to get all that stuff sorted through and compiled into an episode maybe a couple episodes worth i don't know so 
I'm just gonna stop talking. My memory card's almost full. Again, thanks everybody. Um, excellent turnout for the show this weekend. I could not have expected any more. So really cool. Catch you guys later.